You are now listening to Sorel Gar- 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 MD. Sorel Gar- MD. Is IR a clinical subspecialty? I found out the hard way that IR is clinical. There used to be a day when a patient would show up in a room, we do the procedure, and someone else would handle the rest. Well, that day is dead, Doug. We don't roll that way no more. Now we're clinical. Now we use this, we use this, and I'm always using this. Now we see the patients before the procedure, we do the procedure, and we follow the patient after the procedure. In order to illustrate the point of how is IR clinical, I want to talk about a procedure where we use our clinical skills effectively. And that procedure is UFI, also known as uterine fibroid embolization. The story of a uterine fibroid embolization begins in the clinic visit. Now, I know some people may not be used to the idea of IRs having clinics, but in 2017, we have clinics. This is a place where we can take a priori information about UFI, present it to the patient, and have them decide if this is the way to go. This is where we elicit the symptoms of fibroids. Now, as a radiologist, it's hard to go from reading a stack of chest x-rays to talking directly to patients about symptoms. But it's very important to ask a patient directly and confidently about things like heavy menstrual bleeding, painful urination, pelvic fullness, perimenstrual constipation. And what I've learned is just from the simple act of eliciting symptoms, we're allowing a therapeutic process to occur within the patient. We're allowing them to put their symptoms out there for someone else to think about, discuss, and manage. The clinic visit is also a place for us to show off our skills as diagnostic radiologists. We can show them their MRI and show them exactly how the fibroids are distorting the endometrium and causing their heavy bleeding symptoms. We can show them how the fibroids are pushing up on their bladder and causing their urinary urgency and frequency. We can also set expectations for the patient based on large registries of data. We can confidently tell a patient they have about an 85% chance of seeing a significant improvement in their symptoms after fibroid embolization. On the day of the procedure, we do all sorts of things from a clinical standpoint to help the patient experience. One thing we do is we use Tordo, a potent IV NSAID, during the time of the embolization to directly antagonize the pain from fibroid inflammation, and this also decreases the use of opioids after the procedure. When we're manipulating the catheters within the uterine arteries, we know these arteries are prone to spasm. Therefore, we use intraarterial nitroglycerin to open up the arteries and allow the embolic to maximally penetrate the fibroid and offer the maximum degree of fibroid infarction. We start a PCA, patient controlled analgesia, pump right in the room. So the patient's in control of their pain from the get-go. After the procedure, I write admission orders. So I admit to the IRMD. I write for a regular diet as tolerated. I write for vital signs Q8 hours. I write for a bowel regimen because of the high doses of opioids. One thing I found out the hard way was to write for hydralazine, 10 milligrams IV Q4 PRM for systolic blood pressures over 180. I got tired of woke, being woken up at four in the morning to manage hypertension. The next day, I see the patient in the morning. I check to see that they're eating, drinking, moving their bowels and bladder. I check their radial artery for a nice strong pulse. I write for prescriptions for oral pain and nausea medicines, and I schedule them for a follow-up visit. And then I send the patient on their way. What I've learned from being involved in over 20 uterine fibroid embolization procedures in my fellowship is that I love these adjunctive aspects of uterine fibroid embolization almost as much as I love the actual procedure itself. And it's for the same reasons. These are high impact activities that allows me to directly improve the quality of life for a patient using my skills as a physician. That's why I'm happy to be a clinical interventional radiologist and why I can't go back to the old way of practicing IR. So that's my piece guys. I hope this video showed you literally how IR is a clinical subspecialty. So what's your deal? Is it just about the procedures for you? Or are you interested in the clinical aspects of IR? I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I think there's a room for conversation. Drop me a line in the comments. Make sure to hit like or subscribe. Share this video if you can. Sorel MD, you know that I'm a clinical interventional radiologist.